Hey guys, it's Drew with Kush Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, we're going to be talking about a high value coin. Should you buy it for your coin company? We're going to let you know. Let's get this video started. So very recently, we were approached about a really high value coin. We ended up making a video a few weeks ago about a 79cc cap die Morgan Dollar, Great Mint State 64. You guys love that video. We wanted to make another one today. This coin that we're going to be talking about in this video is a 1927S Standing Liberty Quarter. It's the key to the series. It's created Mint State 65. It's an OGH holder. And we got offered this coin. Should we buy it? Should we not buy it? We're going to talk about that on this whiteboard today. Break down all the numbers for you just so when you come into this situation, when you're in maybe a coin deal or if you're trying to buy it for your collection, we're just going to talk through the numbers and make sure it's right for you if you want to buy something like this. But if you guys need a coin for your collection, we're having wholesale days right now. So if there's an older coin on our website, it's discounted for you. If there's a newer coin on our website, it's very fresh. It hasn't seen the market in a long time and we want that coin to be for you also. So make sure to check those out. If you guys want to see more videos like this, make sure to leave a like. Let's get to the whiteboard. All right, guys. So we're going to play the game. Pass. Or play. And once again, we're talking about a 1927S. Standing Liberty Quarter. Great Mint State 65. And an OGH holder. So sometimes you end up passing by a coin that you regret because it's very tough to run into. You know, when we run into 27S SLQs, a lot of them are low grade, you know, VG8 or VG10 or find 12 or VF if you're lucky. But we got approached with this coin and we were telling ourselves, man, we're probably not gonna see another one of these for many, many years. And we wanted to give it a shot. And so when we were taking a look at this coin, he wanted, I think $15,000 for it. And $15,000 once again is a lot of money, especially for us or for you wanting to get into coin collecting or coin dealing. But is it a fair price? You know, sometimes you have to expand your mind. You have to think bigger when you're trying to move into bigger coins like this because there sometimes is a lot of money left on the table. We go to some dealer's tables sometimes and they go, a thousand dollar coin, I never want to buy a thousand dollar coin. That's way too much money. Or five hundred dollar coin, I want to stay away from five hundred dollar coins. They can do that. But for us, we want to be able to handle everything from, you know, $15,000 coins underneath that, and hopefully one day, $100,000, $200,000, $300,000 coins like candy because we want to expand our horizons. But I think gray sheet on the coin is $14,000. I'll have it fact checked on the screen as well. So we're paying $1,000 over sheet for this coin. And so from a lot of dealers, they want to pay sheet or under sheet. But from us, recognizing that we do a lot of online, more retail sales, we're going to have to pay more than the person that's wanting to pay wholesale. Because I think what he said was that he had to pay $14,500. So at the end of this, he's going to make 500 bucks if he sells it to us or if he sells it to another dealer. And what he told me is he's like, man, I just don't care if I sell it or not because this coin is so tough and I'm not going to get another shot at this for many, many years. So we said, uh, you know, that's a fair price in our opinion. And some information about this coin, when we looked it up on Heritage, there's actually one that sold recently. We'll talk about that in just a moment. But there's only five OGH Standing Liberty Quarters in Mint State 65 that are 27 S's out there. So, um, you know. Finding a coin like this in an OGH with a nice original look on the obverse in terms of its color and its complexion and then also a nice flashiness on the reverse as well. We thought this coin was all there. And there is a light hit on the back of the coin, which for me, I thought it would hold it back from CECing. And CECing actually plays a big role in this because the last pass sale, um, the last coin that sold was for $20,000 plus. So the past sale for this one, it ended up stickering and it was an OGH. 
So when we were talking about the cap die in a previous video, we said there really wasn't much money to be made. There was no spread. There was no, um, you know, anywhere in between the middle here. But if you can draw the line between 15,000 and 20,000, I know this one's not stickered. You could end up saying, hey, I could sell this if it doesn't sticker somewhere in the middle, man. We can, we can get the 17.5. Or if I find, you know, a collector, maybe they want to pay 18,000. Or, we, you know, hey, if you want to wholesale it, 16,000. So a part of buying this coin also is looking at the, the past sale, which is CC approved, and the sale that you're about to make, hopefully, right, when you buy the coin. And so when you take a look at the coin, is it original? Is it fresh looking? Has it, does it have any issues? Does it have anything that would hold it back from CEC? And how does that play a role in what you do when you buy the coin? So when I looked at the coin, I saw a little hit on the back and I felt like that might hold it back from CEC. Casey said, hey, it probably will pass. It'll be fine. I talked to a few other dealers. They said, hey, it'll pass. It'll be fine. And so we were leaning on the side of it's a nice, rather fresh coin that is in an OGH holder, and it might have a shot at cacking. Sometimes when people walk into deals, there is like a, oh, it's in a new holder, it barely got by, it's not really nice looking, and we might make a little money on the coin. It barely got into gem, right? And so that's something that, are you leaning more on the side of it's a great coin, it's a fresh coin, and we have a shot at it stickering, or are you leaning more on the side of, Okay, I barely got a 65. I wouldn't keep it myself. I don't really like the coin that much, but uh, you know, it's a 65. We can make a few bucks on it, right? So when I saw it in that light, I was like, man, we really should give this one a shot. Because once again, it's a tough coin. So for us, it was a no-brainer. For us, we wanted to play, and we ended up buying this coin. And so uh, we felt like it was a good buy for us because, like we said, there's that spread in the middle. Sometimes. When you're talking about coins like this, there's just not a whole lot of money to be made. You can buy 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 coins with $15,000 and make so much more money. But with this coin like this, we felt it was not only uh, tough, but you, there, these coins don't change hands very often either. So when you're talking about this big coin, you're going to want to buy it because you can actually buy it and sell it very quickly. There's going to be dealers everywhere looking for this coin. And especially in this market where the common stuff is kind of on the decrease and the better stuff is more looked at as um, a coveted item, this coin really for us was an awesome buy. And so that's what our decision was on this. We ended up saying, yes, we want it. He only made 500 bucks, but we wanted to take a shot on it, and we felt like it was the right play. And so we ended up sending this coin to CDC, and we are going to hear back the results in the next video with a bunch of other great coins. And so, uh, when you look, like I said though, when you're looking at a coin, make sure to check the spread as opposed to sales. So if gray sheet is six thousand dollars between uh, the last sale, there's that spread there. But if gray sheets 19,000, the last sale is 20,000, and he wants to sell it to you for 19.5. There's no money to be made there. After fees, shipping, insurance, taking the risk of sending the coin, you're not going to make any money. Another thing to consider also is how many are available out there for purchase and what price are they offering them at. Sometimes when you buy a coin and someone offers you a price and it sounds good, you look it up and there's some listed out there for a lower price that you could have bought, right? And so that ends up putting you as a higher price when you go out there to sell it and you end up holding the coin a lot longer. When we take a look at this coin, the only one I see that's available on eBay is this 1927S and it's great, Mint State 65 CAC approved and it's over 24,000. So, this is the only one that I could see that's available. Another one might be available at auction, but it seems like, well, like we're talking about, there's a big enough spread for you to make some money. And especially if it's CECs, you end up making a good bit of money. But check the spread. Also check the, the rarity, the toughness of the coin. How hard is it to find and who's looking for it? And you might make some money. And so this coin definitely was a great buy for us. Let us know what you guys think of it down below. If you guys enjoy videos like this, make sure to leave a like, comment your thoughts on 
um, buying this coin, would you buy it if you had the money? I think you would because it's just such a cool piece. But we'll let you guys go and we'll see you guys in the next video.